We'll move on to public works now if we're ready. There's three different divisions, the highway water and the wastewater division in the DPW. The highway and the water division, about 80% of the budget for the highway division is weather related. We don't know what type of a season we're going to have. We don't know how much snow we're going to have. We don't know how many thunderstorms. An example of the line items that are affected by the weather include the gas, the diesel, the repairs on the vehicle, the overtime, the electricity, the trees, the potholes, the heating oil, <coughs> the rental equipment, and even the police services. It is all dependent on what type of a season we have, and especially this year. And we have had a lot of snow and a lot of overtime and a lot of repairs, and that will be reflected in the budget as we go through because as we know, last meeting we declared snow emergency because of the situation of the uh, salt and the materials and the overtime starting to get very depleted. So at that time, <coughs> we took a move to put it into a snow deficit so that we can overspend the budget if we need to. <coughs> now in the past, last year we had a deficit. A few years ago we did not. It's like I said, it's all weather dependent. We, we can't say that we're going to have any surpluses or we're going to be in the hundreds of thousands of deficits. As Guilford knows, he's in the same business. It's very hard to know what to do. The gas prices, the diesel prices, they're set. The salt is a set price. <coughs> the patch is a set price. Tree services are set prices. Waste removal, all those are set prices. And a lot of the other things David and I talked about are bid for the Hampshire County bidding process. <clears throat> so we submit our prices, submit our quantities, and our prices are quantities, and then they put it out to bid for us. So we have to rely on them to do that, which saves us some money so that we don't have to go out to bid for any of this other stuff. Saying all that, <clears throat> so we want to start with the, the, the probably the highway department budget. I don't know if you want to go line for line or if you just want to note what the highlights are or the differences are, and it's up to the board. You can just hit the highlights. Okay. So we're not touching the salaries whatsoever as we know that we're in a contract year and the other things that are arising. The assistant mechanics wage is zero. That's now put into the labor part of it. So that's why it reads zero all the way across. And we're going down to the salaries, going through the salaries, temporary wages, overtime. Everything stays the same. Transfer station expenses, we've just got two new mandates. Actually, David, you're aware that you have to sign an okay today for a waistband compliance <coughs> that we did not have to do before and a third party inspection of the transfer station, which the town has to do to remain in compliance. So all of that adds up to uh, you know, money that wasn't budgeted for last year, let's say, because that just came out in the fall and they wanted by the 15th of February of this year to be completed. And of course, we see the oil went up, we're going 3%. Obviously, right now, gas is very reasonable, but we don't know if that's going to hold for next year or not. The electricity, David, uh, as you can maybe chirp in on some of this, on the uh, <coughs> increase on the electricity on, for the highway building. Sure. We, uh, we saw that there was a, uh, uh, we had an opportunity to lock into a fixed price on electricity, and so we locked in at 11.63 cents per kilowatt hour. Formerly that was eight cents or around eight cents per kilowatt hour. So that big increase there reflects the jump that we had to take in order to lock in at the uh, at the higher rate, which is now below market. Which that reflects to the next line item, which is electricity traffic control. That is for our flashing lights that we have. I think we have five of them throughout the town. Mm -hmm. There's some on Bay Road, North Maple Street. 
<coughs> highway building maintenance is the same. And let's see, office equipment maintenance is a big jump in there. We need to get two new computers. And one of them is very important because it's a computer that monitors our field system. That has to be reported to DEP every month, how much we had, how much we used, how much we have left, if there's any leakage. So that is a complicated system to buy. The one that we have is outdated, very hard to run. Also, the uh, secretary for the highway division needs a new computer. Hers is getting very tired, plus all the software that goes along with it. Are we gonna be looking at doing computers uh, capital expenditure? I think we're leaning that way. So <laughs> everyone rolls in. Yeah. yeah. We need to talk about that across the board. Yeah. yeah. Right. Because yeah. this is a specialized computer with a printer. And what do you use for your gas system now? Right now it's monitored. There's a computer. It prints it out daily. It can print it out hourly. It can print it out every time anybody peels up their vehicle. It separates it by department. So that when we charge off our charges to the different departments, we know how much to charge the school, the police, the fire, you know, for their fuel usage. Other than that, it had to all be done by hand. So that's a big help. Snow and ice vehicle repair, that was put in there just to say for equipment that broke down in the winter. We have all of that now in the vehicle supplies and parts. There's $500 in there, but that's really not much at all. It's all in the vehicle supplies and parts. We'd like to separate it to see how much money we're spending, especially on the vehicles. And if there's a vehicle that's spending an awful lot of money on transmissions or rear ends, springs, <coughs> then we'd like to know about it. Then we can put it on a capital plan to replace it, besides the age of it. Highway vehicle maintenance, that's a 5% that was <coughs> talked about by the mechanic for the <coughs> parts that will be ordered to repair all these vehicles. As we all know, parts are going up on everything. I mean, the bills come in and they're just horrendous when they come in for some of these vehicles to be fixed. If we have to ship some of these out, that's even a higher cost because we have to pay an outside person to work on them. Okay, so back to zero, drug and alcohol, legal is zero. Engineering is zero, police, telephone. Telephone, there's an increase. Yeah, one of the phones that the mechanic had was originally, I think it was Johnny Mitch when he was a sewer commissioner. So it stayed that way. It was charged to the sewer. So we went through all these bills, looked at them, and said, well, no, Brian Washkevitz, the mechanic, is now having that phone, so we should, uh, you know, pay for it now. So have it paid for it. These are cell phones? Cell phones, yes. How many? How many cell phones for 30, $3,850? One, two, three, four, I think there's probably what five Gary all together. Yeah. For That's different peoples. Five cell phones? Yes, yeah, Gary, do you have a town? Yes, yeah, Gary has one too, yes. Gary Burke? Gary Burke, yes. Street cleaning services. <clears throat> Since we have switched over to using no sand, it's going to be a cost savings there. We will not be sweeping the roads, we will not have to clean the catch basins, and we won't have to pay the disposal costs to get rid of what they quote call hazardous waste, which we do have a place to, to bring in, which is at the transfer station anyway, if we need to. Vegetation management, <coughs> that was a program started a few years ago that was set up to start to spray around the guardrails, let's say, because of the brush growing up, poison ivy coming in, so that will remain the same. Okay. Building an office is the same. Safety supplies. Gasoline, we put an increase in that. We don't know what the cost is going to be. That's a 3%. Those are vendor recommendations. Right. We call vendors on all, all of these line items <laughs> that pertain to, let's say, repairs, parts, or any of, the, any of the things that are part of the budget. Vehicle supplies and parts. It also includes tires, we're going to hold the line there. Town Hall car, I believe that's the one 
correct me if I'm wrong, that any has that uses um, for inspections road paint markings slash posts. That's for painting the roads and any signs or posts. The road signs post is combined with the road paint and markings now, so that's why that one is zero all the way across, because it's combined with the one above it. Snow supplies, as we know, is in a separate, totally different budget. Temporary patch, as we see, it's zero all the way across. That now is in the snow and ice budget, because a lot of the time we're patching in the winter time. And pipe drain supplies basins, that was a phone call to a distributor to see what his price increase would be for the following year. And again, a ex little explanation, that's for fixing catch basins, replacing culvert pipes, whatever needs to be done. Uniforms were holding the price, dues and licenses were holding the price. And elementary school nursery is zero, that's included <coughs> in the uh, <coughs> Let's see, where did, you, where did we put that? Dues and licenses, elementary is no longer there. It's included with the uh, ditches right now, which is farther down. Sidewalk maintenance, we're going to keep it the same. That's just for paving the sidewalks, patching the sidewalks. As we know, we have to try to keep them up also. Bridge, uh, ditch and dike maintenance is the same. Forestry improvements is the same. Town road paving is the same. That's for fixing gravel roads, for buying uh, miscellaneous things that we, we would need to fix roadways, let's say, stone, whatever that would be the case. <coughs> Bottom line on the highway budget for an increase of 1.39%. Right. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Mike, is there uh, anything that's not in your budget that keeps you up at night? Plenty. The snow, the ice. <laughs> the, well, I don't really want to get into it too much, but there's some areas that are lacking in funds. One of them, of course, was the sidewalks. $3,000 is not much when you're paying. Uh, Almost seventy dollars a ton for blacktop, so that's not very much sidewalk repair. <coughs> Another issue uh, dear to my heart is trees. As Molly would know, I'm on the shade tree committee. That is, you know, the tree service started a few years ago with ninety dollars. It started with one hundred and ten dollars. Right now, we're paying one hundred and sixty-five dollars for the same service from Northern Tree. They have to pay prevailing wages. One hundred sixty-five dollars for what? Per hour. Per hour. For bucket for truck for cutting trees. Okay, for cutting. For cutting trees. So that's an area that's. Is that the town tree maintenance line? Yes. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. So you mostly spend that in the spring because I see this year's. Uh, yep. You only didn't spend, spend anything. Yep. Okay. Just didn't even get the bill yet. Uh, Brian asked earlier if we just finished cutting the trees, which we did, but we didn't get the bill yet. So just about the whole balance of that is going to be spend, expended. <laughs> the situation is that we have some bad weather storms in the spring or summertime thunderstorms where I have to call the tree service in. It's kind of like not too much money left going to be in there to cover the bills if we do have a problem like that arise in the future. But I mean, there's different areas in here, bridges and ditches and uh, the Connecticut River Dyke we spoke about, we had a presentation about it, about maintaining it, about putting money aside, maybe for if we have a small area, a small breach, where we have some money set aside for it, because the Connecticut River Dyke, as we all know, is just about the most important thing there is in the town of Hadley to protect. And to, just the maintenance part of it, the vehicle supplies and parts, I mean, they're just going outrageously high. We're trying to <laughs> you know, replace vehicles as you can, but some of them pass, some of them don't, some of them go to override to fail. So we're shuffling vehicles around here trying to fix them. It's getting to the point here where <laughs> we're just going to have to say, look, we can't, we can't run this vehicle. It's, it's going to cost us five grand to fix it. And if you need it for the snow season, you're going to need one vehicle short. It's going to take you longer to plow the roads. It's going to cost you more money because you got more guys spending more time doing it. 
It's just all, <laughs> as Gilbert knows. Yeah. It's larger and larger. <coughs> Any other questions? Yeah, I do. Um, for the town road paving, it looks like um, about double the budget has already been spent this yep. year. Yes, I wonder which line items is that coming? What What are you figuring you're not spending? As I glance through, I see vegetation management. There's a budget there, but yep. nothing's being spent out of that it. Are you? Be, yes. right, is that what you're thinking? We're not going to do that this yes, year. Yes, we're not going to do that exactly. Street cleaning services. We're not going to do that because we don't have to. When we pave, if we want the roads, but the contractor that's going to do the paving, we'll send that a sweeper. Sweeper, and we'll do it before we do the actual uh, surface treatment. Whatever treatment we're going to put down. Right. And the reason you wouldn't want to budget it differently this year and put them in the right line items are, are why? Well, we wanted to hold the line item as close as we could to have the at a level fund budget, but the problem lies is this year, earlier this year, it was rainy, it was damp, all the dirt roads decided to go to heck on us, so we spent an awful lot of money trying to repair the dirt roads. Oh, that's paving? Includes yes, dirt roads? Yes, dirt roads, okay. yeah. Yes. Grading the roads. And grading the roads and okay. everything else, so all that adds up. Mr. John? Yeah. <coughs> How many dirt roads are you maintaining in the Buoy Bridge? Mountain Road, Hawk, I mean, uh, Honey Pops, Aquapita, Pine Hill, so what's that, five? No. What, what, out of all those roads, what roads could be closed down for the winter? In other words, I there's no how, yeah. for instance, Moody Bridge, yep. from Silvio County thing all the way yep. to the other road, yep. there's no houses there. Yep. And there's ambulance services can go around, there's fire protection can go around, mm -hmm. but you're stuck with the snow plow, the potholes, and the mess. And I know other communities close their dirt roads down for the season because of the high maintenance. Yes. Do you guys consider doing that? Yeah. It's an idea. We do that on a section of Shattuck Road off of 47, as Guilford knows. It's the fun one. There's the signs up there that say road not maintained in the winter. Right. Doesn't work because the traffic still goes through. And actually, there was an accident out there because there's kids going. Well, out if there. you barricade the road, they That's can't the go through. That's the next thing. It'd have to be barricaded. It, it, exactly, but have if, to be signage put up. If you right. took all that money and expense. Yep. That you spend on it, it's a significant amount when you add it all oh, yeah. together. It is, because that road is heavily traveled, as you know, for a dirt road it's a cut off. Would the select board consider doing that for the for the winter months? We might. Mm -hmm. You know, you're looking for quick really. I mean But you'd have to look for what the liability is too if people Absolutely. go ahead and use it. Are we responsible for it anyway? Because it's it is it's mostly traffic yeah. from outsiders that come yeah. cross lots. Through. It's, it's Mr. Really? GIS says, or GPS says, oh, you go this way and you're following well, you on the dirt. You put road. a barricade across it, that's in the story. So you blocked our bridge, uh, you know. Yes, we did. I assume you don't oh. want to be responsible for anyone who's mm -hmm. going around the barricade. Yeah. But Although, I certainly want involvement, you know, or the opinion of police and fire, fire, fire to absolutely. make sure. There's people living on all those dirt roads, and in the past, we were more inclined to seriously thinking about stoning and oiling those roads yes. for access, so you'd get rid of most of that maintenance. Which we did do. It would be a lot road. easier to maintain a stone and oil road than a dirt road. So. But you're wrong in that aspect, because the stretch, say, Aquavita to Paul Corbeils, nobody lives there. The stretch between the Silvio Conti Refuge <coughs> and South uh, Maple. Right. No one lives there. Yeah. Right. So that and that is a high maintenance plowing, drifting. It, it's and, terrible. In both of those situations, John, you're wrong because right. your fire access from both sides on a tanker shuttle down those roads because there's no water lines down there is very important to this community and those people that live in those houses. Where's right. the hiding closer to the house? Euro. Where's the house, the closest hybrid that you would fill from 
from there to Sylvia County, is it closer going to South Maple or is it closer going to Bay Road? So rather it's, than it's, solving it here tonight, we can do probably it. right in the middle of that particular. So actually, I think we're going to have a lot of discussion about roads coming up soon. Good. Dirt roads, private roads, a couple and other things. We'll have the police and fire. And then we need to look at the whole thing. Right. So, but it is something to look at. Although I, just to say, I think closing Shattuck Road, no matter how you close Shattuck Road, they're still going to go over. They're still going to go over because it seems to be a challenge to the young men who live in the neighborhood. Um, that that's just something that's the nature of the beast. And even though you close it, you do have that going on. So then you have to look, weigh the fact for emergency personnel to go recover the person in the vehicle. Is it more dangerous to have the road open or closed? So that is a good question. Yeah, I think I want public safety can address. Yeah. So, Snow and Ice? Oh, oh, one, more oh, one more question. Um, the overtime line um, is budgeted at 18000 Yep. And um, that uh, 2012 15 was spent. Uh, 2013 only five, mm -hmm. 14 less than five, and this year about six so far. Yep. So why are we still keeping it up at 18? I assume a lot of that went over to the snow and ice budget. A lot of it to... is in the snow and ice budget, but it's just for the snow and the ice. This overtime that you're speaking about mm -hmm. is for other related issues. Let's say if we have a microburst, That's or if we have a uh, flood that we have. <laughs> take care of. That's why we try to keep that up because, again, weather dependent. We don't know what's coming down the road. I mean, that's even for someone that hits a stop sign that the police department says, you got to put it, you guys got to put it back up because it's <coughs> illegal to leave an intersection without a stop sign because someone's going to sue the town for it. So that's why that's there. <coughs> I mean, it's not used, all of it. Some years, very little of it, and right. you don't know what's going to happen you know, through the rest of the year. That's the whole idea. That's for our whole year's budget. That's you know, for July. 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 Yeah. yeah. Uh, when it was at fifty-eight, that's that's before we had the snow and ice budget. Right. I assume. Okay, right. so that most of it went over there. I think I thought actually all of it went over. I'm not no, sure why didn't. it went from ten to eighteen when we didn't spend any more of that. Maybe. Well. Again, to play it safe, we, we don't know. I mean, even if you have flooding in Connecticut River or anything that happens pertaining to the highway division, washouts, any of that stuff, you, you just don't know. I mean, it's very, very unpredictable what's going to happen. I mean, if we don't use it, obviously it goes back. It can, only, it can only be used for overtime. It can't be switched over to anything else. It can't mm -hmm. be you know, turned into uh, any other section of the budget. I have a quick question. Um, if if there's a snowstorm, say today, and then it's windy two days from now, and you have drifting snow, you're still using all that overtime out of snow and ice, yes, correct? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes. Thanks. Our favorite topic: so snow and ice. Right. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? That's, that's, the right. easiest, that's the easiest one to budget. I got, right. I got a call today from the Gazette, and that was all that, what they wanted to hear about. So a nice budget. I was spending on mining and house. Everyone's out of money. Yeah. That's what they want to talk about? That's exactly what they want to talk about. Okay. So here, yeah, Scott, in case you pause me. Yeah. The, um, so then again, the snow and ice budget is is the only one that we can go into deficit if we actually have to. I mean, right. we really can't cut this budget because if you cut it, then you can't go, you're not allowed by the state to go into the deficit right. the next year, right. just so people know. And you don't want to increase it. You can if you want. You, but, Too yeah, much. but then it will be just sitting there and right. not accessible. Right. Yes. You're better off leaving you, it where it is and declaring right. a state of emergency it's, if you have yes, to. Exactly. It, it, but if, if year after year we're overspending this budget, if it's Simply right. inadequate for the job <coughs> to consider increasing it. I think if you're in a situation where you're habitually going over uh, in mild winters even, then there's little chance that we're going to have a, a big surplus right. at the end. Right. So. Uh, as, as recently as 2013, though, we were 50000 under budget. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah but um, I can, the salt prices went up $15 a ton this year. Got some That's a pretty big job. Yes, it is. 
Mr. Miskowski? What's the history in, in uh, snow uh, deficits in the last five years? Well, it's nice. Can you read it out for the general public? you got to give it back, then. <laughs> 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 okay. So, I don't know, this, this doesn't include, uh, we haven't overspent before, have we? Oh, yes. Yes. Last year. Okay. All right, well, not in 2013. It was budgeted 162374 spent 110498 so that's about $52,000 under. Mm -hmm. 2014 uh, increased the budget to 178,922. Spent just under that, but uh, okay. So that wasn't an overspend year. No. Nope. Okay. Last that brings us to this year, 168,222. We've spent 98. All right. Isn't this the first year we've overspent? This is going to be yes. Okay. All right. Yes. No, it's not going to be a beautiful no, effort. We're going to be playing golf next weekend. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought we had to do transfers into snow and ice last year. So we, did. we did. We did. Yeah. 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 So, we spent last year. when that happens, mm -hmm. that increased the amount budgeted. Okay. You know, that doesn't make sense. Because the amount budgeted was six, uh, 168, 222. But yeah, so you're by 10,000. We had to do a two step. We had to do a line with the line So we moved 10,000 in? Yeah. Okay. Roughly. What throws me off is that uh, when we move money into it, uh, the accountant changes the allocation. I think it was the overtime that they took out of that 18,000 a year. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. They took 10 out of that. So, so the last okay. the last three years you went into deficit once? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Not counting this year. Not counting. We in it. We in this year. Well, you're not in it. Yeah. Right? You're not in deficit. Uh, yeah. I think we are in it. Right, right now. Yeah. 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 We're in deficit. And we've only had that budget line for the last three or four years. Right. There wasn't in 12. So it started for 2013. It started for yeah. 2013. 13. Before three years ago, it was always pertained in the highway budget and right. individual line items. Three years ago, we broke it out and made it its own budget. I like what the selectmen are doing is because if you know, if there's a equivalent emergency, it's emergency, mm -hmm. and you spend it. Otherwise, you don't spend it. Right. You can't. Right. Are there any other questions for snow and ice? No. Street lights. Street lights. We're not. 21.33 percent. Mr. Nixon. Uh, again, this is uh, based upon going to the fixed price for electricity. So, how many street lights do we actually have? Does anybody actually know? I was just curious. A lot. We cut back. back. No, it should be like go. less than. There should be less than 50, I think. We're paying for the ones on roof nine, also. Right. Yeah, but there's there's not that. Yeah. I'm just curious. We don't know what to look that up. How old is your mask? Eversource. Not Ever -source. I think I might have written that down. I was just curious. That's a good question because if we knew how much it per, what it cost per street light, you could know what it would save us to cut out five or to add five. Well, when we talk, well, when we were talking about um, looking for cost savings. Yeah. Um, the one thing that people are doing is some communities, even little communities, are buying their street lights yeah. and then converting them to LEDs. And, and then the LEDs are much cheaper. Um, electricity wise, electricity they cost wise. more. But they're, yeah, I mean, you save a fortune. Um, these, 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 these lights here use a ton of electricity. I, we used to have one, just for an example, we used to have one on the milk room. One of those big lights with a huge light bulb, and I don't know. I want to say six or eight months ago, I had it replaced with an LED light, and the LED light is about as big as this Snapple bottle compared to having a big bubble light there. It costs a lot more because it's a new light and a new fixture, but the electricity savings is unbelievable. Yeah, I did apply for a uh, uh, local assistance grant to. Uh, for uh, uh, doing a feasibility study on owning our own street lights, but they wanted a regional partner. Uh, they tried to partner with Sunderland, and they, they simply weren't able to 
respond in time for the deadline. But if we had a partner who would be interested in doing a joint feasibility study, we can get that paid for by the, the, the local assistance grants. To do the study or to do the relamping? To do the study to find out if it's feasible to do it. Or Maybe efforts. Yes, you say? Yes, might have to ask. Consider yourself asked. No, someone has to formally ask. Okay. <laughs> we'll formally ask. Do we well, ask? We have to. If you guys really want to do that, I'll also abstain from the discussion. If you say yes, then town administration. It won't. It won't hurt to ask Amherst. Like yeah. said, why not? That makes right. sense. Go right down Route Nine. The Amherst or Northampton, see what they got out there. And I don't think North Northampton didn't. They're doing any crop upgrades. I don't think they did their lights. No. Yeah, Amherst did buy their lights, and to tell the truth. In six months, my actual <coughs> usage in Amherst with street lights, there's over, there's a lot of lights. Um, they dropped down to seven thousand dollars in six months, wow. and we originally were budgeted at one hundred thirty-two thousand dollars, and we cut it down to seventy thousand for this year. We've only spent that much, huh. but you do have to, you have to have a, you have to have a, um, a sugar day to help you buy the, the fixtures. Yeah, they're expensive. Yeah, we went through the Green Communities Program, which mm -hmm. has other things tied to it as well. Right. Well, the power company comes around with incentives too. Maybe they'd be interested. <coughs> no, they're not very interested in changing the street lights to LEDs. <coughs> We've talked to them repeatedly, and then they, uh, um, the, little, the little community of Gill is getting ready to do theirs. They have 48 lights. Mm -hmm. um, I think it would pay the select board to talk to our legislators about the lights of Route 9. I know when we first cut the lights in Hadley, it was the first time suffering at that time. And we reviewed the whole town with the police and left all the intersections on, but all the other ones were cut. And I mean, people were upset about it and what, but you have to look for money to cut somewhere. And we tried to go after the state, but again, the state maintains the electric for the stoplights, they should maintain all the lights that light a state highway. That's a state highway, not a town highway, the Route 9 corridor. There's some, move, there's some movement among the state highway department to do some of that because uh, they switch over to their um, desire to be more <coughs> more pedestrian bicycle and more, more transportation friendly for other modes of transportation. They're talking about the fact that they don't People are talking to them saying, you don't do sidewalks, you don't clean your sidewalks, but you own sidewalks. You need to do that if you want to do this. And mm -hmm. they're talking about street lighting, you need to change your street lighting and, and be a little more conservative about your street lighting. Um, so that's actually something that the state is working on, and we might see something out of that. Well, who is working on that? State legislation? Uh, Mass Highway Department, or Mass DOT Department is doing it. So it's part of their becoming more green and becoming more user pedestrian and bicycle right. friendly. So it's working. All right, are we ready for the next one? Building maintenance. Building maintenance has um, several increases. Uh, the buildings are getting older, they need more maintenance. <coughs> However, uh, one of the buildings, uh, there is uh, optimism that it will be sold, so there's a substantial decrease in it. So a bottom line of a 2%, just over 2% building maintenance increase. For particulars, we can talk to Gary Berg if need be. This is just three buildings? Yeah. Town yeah. Hall Senior Center? Uh, four Hall Senior Public Center. Safety. Public Safety. Public Safety. Oh, and the, okay. The library is still in the library budget? Right. Mm -hmm. right. And it, why, why is that? If we have a building maintenance, they have, you it's still do maintenance at the library, right? If it's pro it's part safe. of that formula for that. Uh, oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's <laughs> so much money. <laughs> yeah. For the, we took it out, to for the grant. Branch, so. yeah. All right. Carry on. So this is, a, this is a budget that could be much higher than 2%. Right. Uh, given the, the guidelines of the select board, uh, we kept it at 2%, but it could be higher. Uh, buildings are old. They need, they need all sorts of things. How's, how's your budget for, through six months, Linda? What do you have? Anything? 25, uh, almost 26,000 has been spent out of 66. Okay, so on schedule. Yeah. Could someone tell me what, what out of that maintenance budget, what is actually contracted services and what is actually there for 
maintenance, unforeseen maintenance. Gary, <coughs> Gary, do you have any of those? I don't have the totals of that. I, I mean, I could figure it out here if I had. Well, but, um, do we have a we have the custodial services contract that that comes out of here? Mm -hmm. yes. uh, no, that comes out of that comes out of the, uh, the department one, budget. One nine two to one nine nine budgets. Mm -hmm. So none of this is actually. Anything. So, you but have, there's you an have the trash service, service that comes out of it. You have the elevator inspections. Okay. You know, boiler cleanings, that kind of stuff is all you know every year, every month, every six months. You know, depending on every month trash, all that stuff is coming out. My question on that, contractual services go up, but our regular maintenance to our buildings, and if you look at the buildings, you are living proof of it. Start with not having all. You can't lowball the most important part of that. You know, you gotta you gotta look at that. Or well, you're gonna end up with, with more not having halls. Yep. And all right. This money is just to take care of like something breaks, there's a faucet that's bad, you know, you've got a cracked pipe. It's, it's taking care of, it's putting band-aids on stuff. Right. We're not painting anything or changing anything. Or that's what you it's worn out. Right. You know, then we have to go in front of capital and right. you know, stabilization, and then everybody's going, well, that should be in the budget. Okay. You know, so that's, so the, that's why the big money is all those other questions. So the, the big increase, if you look from 13 to, to 16, the big increase in the, the budget is, driven partly be because of need, but it's also to satisfy a request of the CPA committee that, uh, that we develop and maintain uh, a higher effort of, uh, of maintenance on these buildings in order to qualify for consideration for the uh, for CPA funds for historic preservation. Okay. Why is the public safety complex so much more costly than any of the other buildings? Do you know what's in there? Got what you pay for. <laughs> it's, but is it a part of that? It's, the building's 24-7. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the lights are on <clears throat> constantly. They, so you know, just everything the wear is tear. Right. Everything is getting three shifts uh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. a all day, plus three shifts on the weekend. Okay. All the other buildings are only open eight or ten hours a day. Or some even less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Cemeteries? Level five. All right. Any questions on cemeteries? Take a walk into the water enterprise and some waste water. Previously, 15% of Jim, which reads the meters, that's the guy's name that reads the meters, the employee, was charged to the sewer department for reading the meters because they benefit on their end of it when they do the sewer billing. Now we have decreased that amount and it is now 5% from the sewer department. So that's, that's why there is a $2,450 increase in the water budget under the salaries because now we are charging more to the water than we were before. It was charged to the sewer for reading the meters. That's the explanation on that one. So what else does he do during the day or during the week? Yeah. He's out on the road, uh, you know, fixing hydrants, fixing water breaks, snow plows, snow plows for us, and uh, anything that comes up for the water department, special meter readings and uh, Finding services, locating services, fixing services, whatever comes up for the day for the water division. So he, so he spends 10% of his time reading meters yes. and the rest is doing yes. other water duties. Other, other work for the department. Okay. And the wages we're not touching, and we increased the oil by $70. We don't know what it's going to be next year, so we're Hopefully going to be all right. Again, the electricity, which David mentioned earlier, there's an increase on that. And again, underneath that shared electricity, that's the portion that the water department pays for usage at the highway division for the electricity at the highway garage. So, and uh, 
everything else is the same. Water equipment maintenance, they're decreasing it. Water meter repair and maintenance, they're reducing it. We're slowing down on the amount of meters that we're changing. We don't have to change as many, we're catching up. So we thought that would be a good place to reduce it because we've replaced a lot of meters in the past two years. And portable radio maintenance, so it's only $38, but that's a contract <coughs> service with the fire department. They arrange that. And vehicle maintenance, again, that's because of talking to the town mechanics of what the prices are going to be for the repairs of the vehicles for the parts. And rental equipment, that's from talking to various vendors to see if we need to borrow or use a piece of equipment or if they help us out with a water break, what their increase would be for next year for their equipment. Large equipment like we use on Route 9 if we have a water break. Legal services, we're thinking it's going to be a contract year, correct David? So we increased that. Engineering services, we increased that. That also includes the assessment that the town has to pay under the Safe Drinking Water Act. It's so many cents per gallon that we have to pay the state. As Gilford is probably aware of, he has to pay the assessment to the state also every year on how much water is pumped. That's how much they bill us for, for enforcing their regulations, let's say. <coughs> Telephone is increased 16%. Advertising 120%. Again, uh, legal. 10%. I mean, 10%. I'm sorry, 10%. Again, if anything has to be put in the paper under a legal ad, they are very, very expensive to put in nowadays. If we have a problem with, you know, uh, water, we have to notify the residents. We have to put actually a legal ad in the paper now to be in compliance with DEP. So that is very costly. And police services, we just added the 2% uh, to that in case when they have their contract signed, we can be ready for their increases when we need them, especially on Route 9, as we know when we have all these water breaks that we cannot really fix anything on Route 9 without the police department there because the traffic situation, as we all know, gasoline again is falling more or less what the highway is. <coughs> Vehicle supplies and parts, that's through a conversation with the how mechanic of what he felt the increase would be. Water supplies and pipe, again, it's a 5% increase. We talk to the vendors, we call them, we explain to them what we are, you know, we're asking them what their prices would be for their materials for the next year, and that's what, that's what they said to put in for. As we know, everything is going up. And uniforms, and let's see, dues licenses are the same. And water equipment purchase, there's a big jump there <coughs> from $7,000 to uh, $12,000. And that's to purchase hydraulic tools for a new pickup that the water department has so that we can use a hydraulic hammer and a hydraulic saw on our new pickup when we have water breaks to try to make this go along a little bit quicker than trying to cut it with our cutoff saws when you're running into problems, trying to get the saw to run and cut all the way around the pipe. So there's <coughs> a new way of doing it. There's a hydraulic chainsaw type uh, apparatus that you can use actually to cut the iron pipe even. So that's what it's going to be used for and actually a new sub pump too that we need because <coughs> those tend to not last very long after being used so many times recently, like on Route 9. <coughs> fire hydrants, uh, water construction, which is fire hydrants. We're trying to replace 10 hydrants. I could speak an hour about the hydrants in town. <coughs> There's probably over three quarters of them are put in the 50s. They're non breakable, and we have a hard time just going possible to fix them nowadays to get the parts. I mean, you can order them, they come in. You try to take it apart, it's a hassle. It's cheaper already to dig a hole, put a new hydrant in, it's a breakaway. You've got the repair kits, it's a newer version, and it seems to be the way to go because these older hydrants. They're not breakaway hydrants. Right, they're not breakaway hydrants. And when the car hits them, we end up with a water break. With a breakaway hydrant, we do not. It just breaks the top off, and the water does not come shooting out of the hydrant. 
the older hydrants were made of cast iron also, and the corrosion yeah. inside the, the inside the hydrants yeah. are the biggest problem. Yeah. The newer hydrants are all ductile iron. <laughs> They've got a coating inside that don't corrode, don't yep. don't yeah. create the, right. the rust and particles and build up in them. Do we have any Hollyoaks left? We have one. Really? <coughs> It's on the way to the highway crash. Okay. And it's the kind that's got the weathers that go up and down. Does this? This the art? Oh, sorry. Those old hydrants are really just like a works of art, really. They are. So what's your plan? Do you have a, have you guys set up a concrete plan, replacement plan for those hydrants, seeing how we know we have an yep. aging? The way we do that is when we flush. Yes. We find out right away whether the hydrant is okay, yeah. whether it's marginal, or whether we can't shut it off no matter how many times you turn it. So that's a good indication on that. And then, of course, if there's a fire, the fire department lets us know of, say, hey, Mike, this hydrant, we can't shut it off. It's still leaking, dripping. You should look at it. Yeah, but I, Are they I guess I guess my I guess my question. <laughs> I understand obviously that that's the information you get, but. What I'm what I, what I was asking about is if you let's say you you know you have seventy hydrants that are pushing a hundred years old, mm -hmm. okay, and then let's say you do your normal flushing and you find eight to ten every year that are bad that need to be replaced. Yep. Um, that kind of gives you your allotment of how many you know you're going to need to replace and how many you can do in a year and base it off of that. I think it's something that, you know, we're gonna be talking about water rates here fairly soon, and we have an aging water system, and I think it's time that we sat down and put a plan together to improve the capital infrastructure of that plan. And you're talking about, we, we did it a couple years ago with the meters, and we're on an aggressive replacement program so that we can get those old meters out and get the new ones in. I think we have to do the same thing with hydrants, uh, pipes in the ground, everything like that. We need to know those numbers yeah. so that we know what we're doing over the next 10 or 15 years to try and right. improve that infrastructure. <laughs> I believe we're looking for Brian, a prioritization plan to, to replace the uh, water distribution. I mean, I think the same thing should be done on the, on the collection system. So you have the water master plan, which That's is right. nearing. That's correct, and that's being updated. Yeah. And what's the ETA on that? It's Not back much, uh, yeah. less than a month because I think we did the final uh, checking it over with Kristen. Yeah. So it should be less than a month where we have it. We should have a lot of those answers there. Okay. So we're going to quick question on telephone. Um, that's this is cell phones and it's for the phones and the yes stations and for the alarms at the stations yes. Mr. Kelsey. Yeah, I got a question. You talk about water, but I don't hear you talk about sewer. That's the um, next one. We're coming to it. You yeah, what? That's the next one. Okay, but in the water, is there any cross training between water personnel? Highway personnel and sewer personnel. So you could take a person from water, if he's licensed, to work in a sewer, and vice versa. See, the problem arises, John, that all my highway guys aren't really licensed to work in the sewer, correct? I mean, we use the highway guys in the sewer to go out as, get, a, backup. as a backup if they need someone to go with them to check the deep stations. But as <coughs> far as I brought it up a couple times during the past couple meetings. Right. But you know, there's there's no incentive for the guys to go and get their licenses in the highway. They're not contractually so, obligated. Yes. Right. Do it. So you know, the guys that want to go and better themselves and get their licenses, like the ones that have them now, moved into better positions over a period of time. That's not. But there's no requirements for the highway personnel. To better them. So. The point right. I want to put across the concept of the DPW when it was formulated was to cross train and cut out overtime, and which I believed would work, but it never was implemented. And it should be. 
it's all one DPW, they should, the sewer should be, and they do have, you have a water license, PEP has a water license, but yet you don't go into that water department, or vice versa. And there you could save a significant amount of overtime if that was done in the DP, you know that, Guilford, you know how that works. It would save a significant amount of money and you've got a well-trained crew, this one's off, that one's off, another one can step right up to the plate. That's what's important. That's, that would be a good thing to look at in the right. future. I, I think it's a great idea, and I also think it's a good, good time now to assume but, the town will be in, in a contractual. Contractual change. That's the time to talk about it. Yeah. Five years passed of the, the starting of the DPW, and nothing was done in those five years. Actually, there's, there's been a few things done, but yeah, some of the contract things do need to change. And also, right. another question in water. How are all the valves, the shutoff valves, are they angry open, closed, no. tested? No. You mean exercise. 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 So, in other words, when you have a break, that's when you find out the valve works? No. Work? When, well, that... Or the stem is full of sand? Stem is full of sand. Or when we do our unidirectional flushing, when we close valves, some of these valves, John, I can attest to it. I've been here so long, I've seen what happens to them. If you open up a valve in the center of town over here, John can say the same thing. You will have a water break. So it, you ignore it? Ignore it. We go further down. Most, another valve. most of the time, when we get a water break, if we first of all, we can get to the box. That's one thing. That's yeah. one issue. But when you get on it and you turn it, the old style valves had uh, old graphite packings. What <coughs> happens they deteriorated since 1904 when they were installed. Just so, a little. <laughs> uh, and, and I, I've been in a home myself. We had to literally get in there with torches, cut the bolts off, pull it all apart, repack it in the ground rather than replacing the valve to shut off a whole another four miles of water line. To, you know, we, we have been fixing them periodically throughout the system. You only but fix them when, when something breaks. No. Yeah. Well, that's no, what, is, that's what no. Brian was saying. Yeah, we need to get that's... something down through through planning with the infrastructure of the water and the wastewater. Absolutely. The water is 1904, mm -hmm. so updated in 1976. The wastewater is 1964, updated in 19... 88. Not all, not, all. not all of it. I, I know. So that's part We've of this. We've got some serious issues ahead of us. <laughs> and that's part of the plans we're looking at now that are being updated. And yes, we do have to set some type of replacements. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask Mike one more question? Yes. Um, same question before uh, is on the highway. Are there either services that aren't being covered in this budget that you feel really should be? Or, you know, um, there is and maintenance. I mean, we're talking about large just, capital, but maintenance as well. Just what we were talking about is the valves. But Main line valves. Yeah, the the situation with with that is the water lines are so old. We're scheduling replacement of a lot of water lines, so they're going to replace the valves <coughs> as we go along. But there's a tremendous amount of water valves in this town that, as soon as you touch them, they would leak. So that's one area. But there's a fine line that you can draw. Should we fix this valve, or are we going to replace this whole line here in another two, three, four years? Mm -hmm. So why would you go out, spend all kinds of money to replace the valve just to find out two years down the road that you're going to end up replacing it? But that's one of the areas. The newer, let's say newer, but it's not that new. It's in the 50s section of town, the North Hadley end of town, let's say. And the valves aren't as bad. They do not leak. But when you get to Bay Road, South Maple, Route 9, Rocky Hill, East Street, we keep going. No. <laughs> there, there's a lot of a lot of touchy places, as they say. But in terms of flushing and all of the everything else is in here. Everything this budget else, accounts for. Yes, it does. Well, doing the flushing is done during the day, so. Yeah. There's, there's still one more issue is the stump grinding that was pretty much wiped out and there's some yeah. critical stumps that really need to be taken out that actually yeah. do damage along the sidewalks to the town equipment. That's yeah. cost us a lot of money in the long term. That's highway division, you know. Mm -hmm. Mike, can I ask Let's, you, how can you properly f flush if you can't touch these valves? The ones that we know we can't touch, we don't. But the ones that we can, we shut off and we 
flushed. What's we know the, which ones they are. We what's have the them. effect of the flushing process if you can't do that valve? Is it done proper or best you can? Best, best we can. be the best answer. Yeah. So I think it's time to move on to waste water. I agree. <laughs> waste water, please. We'll pour off the water. Uh, Dennis was supposed to be here this evening, but he drove this evening. No waste water. No, no you, you better take care of this. Oh, give me that. There you go. All right. Uh, No differences until you get to no. the, uh, the elect electricity. electricity, which uh, I think David, which got six thousand dollars on that, David, did. through your formula. Yeah. <coughs> uh, the sludge removal tri treatment, I know it's gone went up. Uh, Dennis knows why. Uh, I don't, I can't are you, are you actually where are you going with the sludge? Uh, Montague, mind you. Yeah. We're hauling it to Montague through. We're hauling it to Montague through uh, Franklin County uh, bid, uh, and the trucking is is the increase. Trucking and fuel uh, surcharges on the trucking. Vehicle supply deposit. Once again, that's coming from Brian, our mechanic. Yeah. So chemicals. We've been advised to uh, less than by a thousand dollars. Uh, chlorination supplies, once again, through the vendor, uh, uh, increase of $500. Um, the, the big increase is the principal long-term debt and interest. Uh, that would be pump stations one and four. Uh, the payments on it. Yeah, the, the payments on it, exactly. That's the waste water. Great. Any questions from the board? I ask many. I think she. Yeah, I'm trying to find. Is it with budgets about a hundred thousand dollars? Does that sound? Oh, one hundred thousand fifty. Yes, twenty-five thousand. Right. And, and once again, that's a lot of it. Is that? Oh, not a lot. The vast majority is the repayment of pump stations one and two, uh, one and four. It's principal yeah. and interest for those. If you take that out. It's not much of an increase. Oh, I see what you mean. It's the, it's the debt there. Okay, I see. All right. That's huge. Ninety-one and twenty-four thousand. Yeah, ninety. Yeah, ninety-one and forty-nine. Oh yeah. So sewer facility maintenance, the fifty-two forty. That seems to have been hanging in at eighty-four thousand uh, dollars allocated each year, but it's been uh, it hasn't spent that much ever. The most was in two thousand thirteen spent sixty. In Fourteen only spent twenty-five thousand. Um, what what is why we have such a um, uh, cushion there? On that. Uh, basically, the plant is now 27 years old, and it runs 724. And there's okay. there's a lot of, of pumps and units and mixers and water and sludge separators. Equipment is. is Really getting ready. Air raiders involved in that job. Getting getting ready to be replaced. Um, there's the tank ceilings yep. that we have in the master plan. There's a bunch of things that we do have in there. We just haven't gotten around. With one and four going on, it's pretty much taking the three of us right to our limits here now. So are these parts, or or is this? I'm just wondering. A is lot it capital? of them. Like we're reserving in case something. A lot, of, a lot of no. A lot of it's parts and equipment replacement. So it's eighty-four thousand. You think that's still a good estimate of what you need to have in there? Yeah, yeah, that's that's on the low side too, actually. Yeah, this year's only uh, fourteen thousand. Yeah. The four aerators have been replaced five years ago now, four or five <coughs> years ago now. Uh, the two clarifiers are the next two units that are going to need major replacement. So we may that may be enough to do one. Uh, next year uh, may not be even enough to do one. And, and the, you, you do this in the house or you contract it out when you do it? We 
bid the, I believe we bid the aerators out for parts and then we did the installation ourselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mo most of it I, I do myself repair wise as much as I can. Uh, the ceiling of the big tanks, of the half a million gallon tanks, where we really want to outsource. We've got some good figures yep. from three uh, of the of the contractors to put a film, uh, epoxy film, on the concrete tanks because the epoxy paints worn right off of them. Right? They're yep. starting to deteriorate. The other thing that John knows is that the lag time of some of this equipment, like three to six months, <coughs> you water it out, you don't see it. To yeah, I mean, we're, we're on borrow time with the two pumps that are in Station 1 right now. We just discussed today, yeah. and we're, we're okay. really hoping to get that station up and running in the next month or two here. One of the reasons why I didn't trim that particular line item is, uh, is that uh, with the anaerobic digester on the horizon, if we needed to do some sort of modest capital upgrade to the plant in order yeah. to match a requirement, uh, that money could come from that uh, that line item. So, even though they historically haven't uh, paid uh, much out of that line item, I'm seeing something on the horizon that may require us to um, make an investment there. If we started a poll on whether that actually happens or not, I think we could make a little money. <laughs> With the digester? Yeah. Why well, now you're against it? Or? No, no, I'd a poll on whether it happens oh. or not. Not oh. against it or not. Whether oh. it happens or not. He's just taking the money. Mr. Skowski. Your uh, parts inventory for the entire system, what percentage do you carry? Right now. Are you on a low end? For mechanical? For, for lines? Pumps, spare pumps? None, as needed. What is I believe we got one spare gearbox kit that came with those clarifiers that we actually took out to make sure we have enough to do one of those units if we need to. So, you but I don't know if the housings, John, you know what the aerators, the housings were worn, the paddles were worn. Well, Once right. we got into it, it wasn't a simple gear and bearing thing to replace and rebuild after 27 years of running seven days a week, 24 hours a day. It, it's it's a big capital improvement. That's what my cons really my concerns were at the sewer commissioner and still today, is that I believe you guys don't maintain enough parts of something, especially an aging dinosaur system. Yeah. It's it's important <coughs> that you have that there because you can't just say, well, I'm gonna wait a week or two weeks. No, that needs to be fixed ASAP. And another point I wanted to bring out is the board acting as sewer co commission should set up a program for camera to all the sewer lines, inspecting every manhole identified, and to do that, you guys in Amherst got a camera, right? Yeah, I got a couple. Yeah, you do. Right. The and that's what Hadley, I mean, the state only so mandates so much of ours to be this done. This is going, and, and we, we do a few miles of it every, every year to, yeah. to, stay, to stay in compliance with DEP. And the, the, the plan we're supposed to get for this this wastewater plan is supposed to also list all, all that as well, too. That's correct. And, and finally, where are you with the master plan that we spent $60,000? Are you up to snuff with that master plan? Yeah, we're talking about the wastewater master yes. plan. Yes. Yeah, that's where the, the sewer pump stations oh. one and four. Can't that come. project. Uh, Not was, only that. That, that was, was, that was the first one. Yeah. Uh, right. So the the rest are lined up and. Uh, in How far back, according to that plan, are you? How far back? Where yeah. are we on the schedule? Wagon. You're not on schedule. Behind. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, well, I mean, they didn't have a hard and fast timeline, but uh, there was took us, on everything. It took us a few years to get going on it, so there was on everything. So we're about two Never. years behind. Well, I mean, when they talked about a timeline, they said it needs to be done in the first one to five years. Right. So if you go by that, we're on the five years side of it. Okay, that's the question. Right. Do we want to talk any about the well, administrative charges? Any changes? Okay, so um, administrative charges are charges that the wastewater and the water department uh, pay to the general fund to reimburse for costs associated with um, 
the support to the uh, the two enterprise funds. It consists of three <coughs> major components. It consists of the indirect charges, which are personnel and buildings, uh, and so other services, non, non human services. The direct charges, which are the health care benefits that the uh, wastewater and water workers uh, uh, consume, and then finally our OPEP uh, contribution from wastewater to the general fund. So we have a formula here which has not changed. Uh, it's been reviewed by the Department of Revenue and they, they found it acceptable, um, whereby we uh, calculate a percentage of the indirect charges. So for the water department, 4.89% of um, the general, parts of the general fund expenses are to be charged back to the general fund from wastewater and water. So for example, if you take the town administrator, salary and benefits, town accountant, assistant accountant, assistant treasurer, town collector, assistant collector, and town treasurer for their efforts to uh, process uh, uh, information and process of money, um, there is a total of $476,000 and 4.89% of that is to be charged uh, from the water department to the general fund. Same with the sewer, 3.84% for those personnel costs. And then you've got non-personnel costs such as um, the expense of the town administrator, the buildings, the expense of the town accountant, the expense of the uh, town collector, the town treasurer, and legal and insurance less 111F. When I say expense, so this is the expense side of those budgets, not the salary side of the budgets. You come up with total $397,000, uh, and again, 4.89% for water, 384 for sewer, gets charged from those two enterprise funds to the, um, the general fund to offset those expenses that the general fund has to bear uh, for the two enterprise funds. Then we get into the direct charges, uh, and this is simply rip and read. Uh, how much for the retirement, how much for the ins life insurance, how much for Medicare, workers' comp, uh, and health insurance. Do all the workers in water and wastewater uh, uh, cost the general fund? And there we come up with those totals. The only number that we're not quite sure about right now is Medicare. Uh, workers' comp, because we haven't gone through the uh, the audit at this point, so that's an estimated number. The rest are pretty solid. 124,553 for water is direct charges. Wastewater, 93,961 for wastewater. For the um, indirect charges for water, 51,500. Uh, 666 and 65 cents. Indirect charges for wastewater, 36,331 and six cents. And then we have our OPEB costs. And our strategy for the OPEB at this moment is to increase by increments of 10% or $80,000 per year. Uh, and wastewater and water should be contributing towards that. Taking the 7.1 Four percent of total payroll for water, and five um, five point nine seven percent for total payroll for sewer. We come up with a charge of seventeen thousand two thirty six eighty five for water, fourteen thousand four twelve and thirty two cents for sewer, and so the t indirect, direct, and OPEP charges for water come to a total. Two hundred sixteen thousand seven fifty three at twenty seven cents, and grand total for indirect, direct, and OPEP charges for sewer, one hundred sixty two thousand nine ninety and eighty cents. How does that compare to last year? It compares to it's uh, up from last year uh, because of the increases in the direct charges mm -hmm. and our OPEP contribution. It's pretty much in line with where we thought that these admin charges were going to be in the five-year plan.
Mr. Nixon. Yes, sir. Do you charge a school for workers' comp and for uh, health insurance? Their budget. Uh, we pay. Um, we pay the uh, health insurance and workers' comp for the school, and then we use it as a credit towards our net uh, school contribution uh, through the um, uh, Schedule 19 and that we file in October. So that doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, so, we're, so we're, there's we're, a, there's we'll, a, we'll this, talk about that though next week, so we can. I want to answer now, not next week. We're not well, talking about schools now. So we don't. We don't charge back to the school those costs. We use that in a formula in order to comply with state um, education spending requirements. I think it actually make more sense if you had the whole school and do the whole school one time. I understand that. I'm just asking a simple question. Anything else on the indirect sewer? Any questions from anybody? No. No? No finance? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Can I make one statement? Yes. Okay. This will probably be my last chance to say anything for what's left me. Uh, I'll be taking time. But I have to take, but what I ask you is to take serious consideration of the information I did send you on the water and sewer rates. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you're going to find it been lacking for quite some time. If you could pay some attention to it, I think you do the time. Great deal of justice. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. Thank you, Gary.